हेलो स्टूडेंट्स इन कंटिन्यूएशन विद माय लेक्चर सीरीज ऑन न्यूक्लियर एनर्जी फॉर एके टू इंजीनियरिंग एनर्जी साइंस एंड इंजीनियरिंग पेपर लेक्चर नंबर थ्री न्यूक्लियर फ्यूजन न्यूक्लियर फ्यूजन एंड फिजन दिस इज आज इन एके टू पेपर व्हाट डू यू मीन बाय न्यूक्लियर फ्यूजन गिव एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ सेम वॉट इज न्यूक्लियर फ्यूजन गिव एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ सेम so fusion it comes from the word fuse that means to combine any two things so if lighter nuclei are forced together they will fuse and yield energy because the mass of combination will be less than the sum of masses of the individual nuclei so if the combined ma nuclear mass is less than that of iron at the peak of binding energy curve then the nuclear particles will be more tightly bound than they were in the lighter nuclei and that decrease in mass comes off in the form of energy according to einstein's equation you can see here they are combining and the remaining energy is coming out like this okay reactions two general kinds of nuclear reactions are the nuclear decay reaction also called radioactive decay and unstable nucleus emits radiations and is transformed into the nucleus of one or more other elements the resulting daughter nuclei have a lower mass and are lower in energy than the parent nucleus that decayed in contrast in the nuclear transmutation reaction a nucleus reacts with a subatomic particle or another nucleus to form a product nucleus nuclear decay reactions just as we use the number and type of atoms present to balance a chemical equation we can use the number and type of nucleons present to balance a nuclear equation nuclear decay emissions and their symbols helium nucleus plus 2 electron minus 1 charge photon nil neutron zero proton plus 1 charge like the notations you will be using them to solve the questions of nuclear reactions there are six fundamentally different kinds of nuclear decay reactions and each of them releases a different kind of particle or energy most common ones you must have heard in radioactivity the alpha beta and gamma emission but others are also there look here this you have to memorize alpha decay 4 and 2 that means a change in mass number of 4 and atomic number 2 will take place when an alpha particle is emitted similarly for beta decay mass number there will be no change but atomic number will decrease by 1 then beta particle will be emitted for positron emission the atomic number will be increasing by 1 and mass number will remain the same electron capture there will be no change in mass number and the atomic number will decrease by 1 similarly gamma decay there will be no change in mass number and atomic number gamma rays will be emitted spontaneous fission it will depend upon what type of decay you are taking into consideration see alpha decay you have to memorize these equations if the atom is having an atomic number of z and mass number of a and alpha particle has been emitted then mass number will decrease by 4 and atomic number will decrease by 2 giving rise to giving rise to the decay of alpha particles beta decay it will be the atomic number is going to be higher than 1 in positron emission 
the opposite of beta decay electron capture a neutron poor nucleus can decay by either positron emission or electron capture in which an electron in a inner shell reacts with a proton to produce a neutron gamma emission many nuclear decay reactions produce daughter nuclei that are in nuclear excited state which is similar to an atom in which an electron has been excited a nucleus in an excited state releases energy in the form of a photon when it returns to the ground state these high energy photons are gamma rays spontaneous fission very massive nuclei with high neutron to proton ratios can undergo spontaneous fission in which the nucleus breaks into two pieces that have different atomic number and atomic masses this process is important for transactinide elements where the atomic number is greater than 104 let us attempt a numerical numericals are asked on fission and fusion energy obtained when 1 mg mass is completely converted to energy we know from einstein's mass energy equation that e is equal to mc square where c is speed of light so we have been given mass as 1 mg we will convert this into kg so 1 into 10 to the power of minus 3 kg into 3 into 10 to the power of 8 whole square if 1 gram hydrogen is converted to 0.993 gram of helium in a thermonuclear reaction the energy released in the reaction is how much energy released is equal to del m c square where del m is m1 minus m2 so how much is m1 1 gram and m2 is 0.993 grams so i am going to change this gram into kg so into 10 to the power of minus 3 and c is velocity of light so 3 into 10 to the power of 8 i will put these values and a simple subtraction and my answer is there so nuclear fusion and fission are two important processes which you should be knowing and they are asked in the exams okay the fusion is okay this nuclear fusion process is what powers the sun this was asked in section a what is responsible for the energy of sun the answer is nuclear fusion it is responsible for the energy of the sun let us compare fission and fusion nuclear fission that means breaking it into large number of parts and fusion means fusing them together so fusion would be defined as division of a single atom into multiple atoms of small size fusion would be defined as the joining of two or more small atoms to form a large atom fusion requires less energy to divide atoms into two or more ones fusion requires large amount of energy to combine small atoms to form a large atom amount of energy released in fission is much lower than the energy released during fusion the release of energy during fusion is way higher than that of fission reaction fission never occurs in nature in normal cases fusion takes place in stars and sun that are the natural forces all this which you can see here in this comparison table has been asked in your aktu paper if it was section a two marks b and c these are the points which you have to combine while writing a 10 mark answer the fission reaction produces highly radioactive substances very few radioactive chemicals come out of this reaction nuclear reactor is a device which is used to initiate and control a cell sustained nuclear chain reaction 
nuclear reactors are used at nuclear power plants for electricity generation and in nuclear marine propulsion so nuclear reactor generates energy in a number of ways like kinetic energy of fission products is converted to thermal energy the reactor absorbs some of the gamma rays produced during fission and converts their energy into heat heat is produced by the radioactive decay of fission products and materials that have been activated cooling a nuclear reactor coolant usually water but sometimes a gas or a liquid metal or molten salt is circulated past the reactor core to absorb the heat that it generates the rate of fission reactions within a reactor can be adjusted by controlling the quantity of neutrons that are able to induce further fission events control rods are made of neutron poisons and therefore tend to absorb neutrons when a control rod is inserted deeper into the reactor it absorbs more neutrons than the material it displaces energy released in the fission process generates heat some of which can be converted into usable energy okay now you see this is the diagram of a nuclear reactor it is consisting of nuclear reactor core consists of the fuel and generates the heat required for energy production coolant passes through the core absorbing the heat and transferring into turbines turbine transfers energy into mechanical form cooling tower eliminates the excess energy that is not converted or transferred containment the enveloping structure that separated the nuclear reactor from the surrounding environments this question has been asked in your aktu paper it was a 10 mark question so types of nuclear reactors nuclear reactor has fuel moderator control rod coolant pressure vessel or pressure tubes all this pdf file is available in the drop down box nuclear fuel cycle is a series of different stages that a nuclear fuel progresses through from its creation to its safe disposal it includes pond end steps service period steps and back end steps here is the nuclear fuel cycle see uranium you are getting from micro mining the yellow cake so called uranium is extracted converted to uf6 after that it is enriched and slightly enriched goes for fuel fabrication and either or it is at times mixed with some oxide the fuel assemblies are then used and if cooling and storage is required that is done and again sent for reprocessing whereas the waste goes into geological disposal nuclear fuel cycle mining and milling conversion enrichment deconversion fuel fabrication and power generation okay this is the nuclear fuel cycle i have given the answers which you are supposed to be writing in your aktu exam for nuclear physics so in the nuclear section revise very well nuclear fission and fusion revise binding energy curve thoroughly revise nuclear reactor design thoroughly for your aktu exam